Welcome to Kingdom Prevailers International Christian Center, a place ordained by God for the lifting and fulfillment of God's Word for your life. Stay tuned as God's Word is brought to you by His anointed servant, Pastor Chris Abraham. Be blessed. And we pray, we prevail, we prosper, cause we are God. Oh, all things. Hallelujah. Shall we lift up our voices to God and just worship him from the depth of your heart? His records will prevail. No matter the militating circumstances around us, God's record will prevail. Lift up your voice and let him hear your voice of appreciation. Worship God from the depth of your heart. All things are possible with God when we pray. Father, we give you glory. In Jesus' precious name, let's bow our heads as we pray. Unto you that hearest prayer shall all flesh come. Unto you we have come tonight. God that hears and answereth prayers. Father, let your ears be attentive to the prayers of your people tonight in the name of Jesus. As we look into the perfect law of liberty, grant every one of us entrance into your world. Cause your word to gain entrance into our lives. Grant me utterance to ministers, your oracle for the miracles of your people. Give testimony to the word of your grace in everyone's life. But most importantly and above all else, take all the glory in Jesus' precious name. Celebrate Jesus with another clap offering of praise. Please be seated in God's presence. Prevail us. And I have power with God ever prevailing that is your portion in life in Jesus precious name I started a series last week that is captioned biblical requirements for answered prayers biblical requirements for answered prayers and I made us to understand that we serve a prayer answering God, not a prayer keeping or prayer storing God. That God delights in the prayers of his people. He does not make light of the prayers of his people. He delights rather in the prayers of his people. Psalm 65 verse 2. O thou that hearest prayer, Unto thee shall all flesh come. No one comes to God on the altar of prayer and return disappointed, sir. Except if you did not approach his altar with a genuine heart. So God is a prayer answering God. Not a prayer keeping or prayer storing God. He does not keep or store our prayers. He hears and answers them. He takes absolute delight in the prayer of his people. Praise God. Especially when we pray in line with his will. Answer is guaranteed to prayer when prayer is prayed according to God's will. Please get this. Answer to prayer is guaranteed, especially when prayer is done according to his will. 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. The word says, and this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he does what, sir? He heareth us. 
And if we know that he hear us, then we also know that whatsoever we ask of him, that we have the petitions that we desire of him. Amen. So answer to prayer is guaranteed when prayer is made according to God's will. In Proverbs chapter 15 verse 8, the word says, The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. But the prayer of the upright is, what sir? His delight. The prayer of the upright is his delight. So God takes delight in the prayer of his people. He does not make light the prayer of his people. Let's understand that about God. It is his joy to hear your voice in prayer. He takes delight in it. Praise God. My prayer for you is that every time you call upon God in prayer, he will hear and answer you expressly. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. I also showed you the life transforming power of prayer by looking at the example of Jabez and Jacob. Hmm. We saw how God by the instrumentality of prayer changed their lives and the story of their lives. That clearly shows the life transforming power of prayers. Therefore, there is no life or story of life that God cannot change for the better on the altar of prayers. The life and story of Jacob was changed by his engagement with God on the altar of prayers. The same also applied to Jabez. The life and story of Jabez was also changed by his engagement on the altar of prayer. So the altar of prayer is the altar of change of life and change of stories in life. Therefore, there's no life or story of life that God cannot change for the better on the altar of prayer. Therefore, in prayer, God does not only change the situation of our lives, he changes our lives. So prayer does not only change I mean, things, prayer changes our lives. Prayer does not only change things in our lives, prayer changes our lives. Please understand that about prayer. Prayer does not only change things in our lives, prayer changes our lives. That's the life transforming power of prayer. A woman was asked What do you gain from praying to God regularly? A woman was asked that question. What do you gain by praying to God regularly? And she replied, I don't always gain something, but rather, I also lose certain things. Please hear what I'm saying, and I want you to get this. A woman was asked, what do you gain from praying regularly? And she replied, I do not always gain something, but rather, I also lose certain things. And she quoted the things that she lost by praying to God regularly. She said, in the place of prayer, pride is lost. Arrogance is lost. Greed is lost. Anger is lost. I lost the loss for worldly things. I lost the pleasure of lying. I lost the test for sin. 
I lost impatience, despair, and discouragement in the place of prayer. Therefore, listen. Sometimes, we pray not to gain some things, but to lose things that don't allow us to grow spiritually. Are you hearing what I'm saying, sir? So the place of prayer is not only the place of gain. It is also the place where we lose the things that hinder our spiritual growth. <laughs> Are you getting prayer, sir? The place of prayer is not only the place where we pray and gain things. It is also the place where we pray and lose the things that hinder our spiritual growth. The things that inhibit our progress in life. In Proverbs 25 verse 4, the word says, Take away the dross from the silver, and there shall comfort a vessel for the finer. Take away the dross from the silver, and there shall comfort a vessel for the finer. Amen. So there are some certain things that must be taken away from your life for your life to be better than what it is now. In the place of prayer, those things are taken away from you, sir. So in the place of prayer, we do not only gain things, we lose things that hinder our progress in life. That hinder our spiritual growth in life. That's why the Bible said in Romans chapter 12 verse 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present yourself A living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your most reasonable sacrifice. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. This is your most reasonable service. So in prayer, we present ourselves. To our maker, the master. So he can remove the drosses hindering our progress. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Mm. In prayer, we present ourselves to God, our maker. So that he will remove from us the things that inhibit our growth. Our spiritual growth and our progress in life. So on the altar of prayer, we do not only present the issues of our lives, we also present our lives for God to work on us. Thereby bringing a better version of us to the world. Is somebody getting that, sir? Please hear this. On the altar of prayer, we do not only present the issues of our lives, we also present our lives for God to work on us, thereby molding us and bringing out of us a better version of us. In Isaiah chapter 64 verse 8, Isaiah chapter 64 verse 8, the Bible says, But now, O Lord, thou art our Father, we are declared you are the porter. And we are the work of thy hand. And now, O oh Lord, thou art our father. We are the clay. And thou, our potter. We are all the work of thy hand. In prayer, we do not only present the issues of our lives. We present our lives. To our father, our maker. So he can remove from us the things that hinder our blessings and our progress in life and bring a better version of us to the world. When we present ourselves to him, he becomes our potter. We, be, we present ourselves to him as clay in the hand of the potter. We present ourselves to him as what, sir? As clay in the hands of the potter. The potter therefore begins to work on us and in us to bring a better version of us to the world. Sir. There's a better version of you than this you. Yes, <laughs> and only the potter can bring that better version of you to the world. There's a 
better you than this you. A better version of you than what the eye can see. So that's why I, I want you to know that you are more than what the eyes can see. You are. You are more than what the eyes can see. This you is not the ultimate you. It's not the penultimate. It's just the penultimate you. They say you in you that is more than this you. And only the potter can bring that you in you. That's the better, better version of you, sir. In Jeremiah chapter 18, from verse 2 to verse 6, the word says, Arise, go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause you to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. And the vessel that he made of clay was mad. It was tempered with. The vessel that he made of clay was mad in the hand of the potter. So he made it again. He made it again. Another vessel as seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came unto me saying, this is the message therefore. O house of Israel, can I not do unto you as this potter, said the Lord, Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hands, O house of Israel. <laughs> no matter what the enemy has tempered with in your life, God can mend you. Is somebody hear what I'm saying? Mm. No matter what the enemy has tempered with in your life, God can correct it. There's nothing corrupted that God cannot correct. There's nothing corrupted in man that God cannot correct. Whatever is corrupted is also correctable by the Almighty. Somebody heard what I'm saying? But your submission is needed. You submit yourself to the potter as a clay in the hand of the potter. So that whatever is corrupt, corrupted will be corrected by the potter. Your submission is required. You are required to submit yourself as a clay in the hand of the potter so that whatever is corrupted in your life will be corrected by the potter. Somebody hear what I'm saying? Mm. That's why I want you to know, sir, the devil may think that he has finished you, but, sir, God wants you to know that he has just begun with you. The devil may think that he has finished you, but God is just beginning with you, sir. Hmm. God is not through with you. He has just begun with you. It is just the devil, the lie of the devil. He wants you to think that God is through with you. But God has just begun with you. Hmm. In Philippians chapter 2 verse 13, the word says, for it is God which walketh in you, which walketh in you, but to will and to do of his good pleasure. So the devil may be telling you that it is finished with you. When the devil tells you it is finished with you, God is telling you, I'm just starting with you. I'm not through with you, I'm just starting with you. For it is God that walketh, it is God that walketh, present continuous tense. It is God that walketh in you. Present continuous tense. So God is not through with you. That's why, sir, <laughs> this you is just the penultimate you. It's not the ultimate you. Even you does not you know the ultimate you. Even you, sir, does not know the ultimate. Do you know what God can make of your life in one year? One year is even too much. Do you know the transformation that God can bring into your life in the twinkle of an eye the Bible says in a moment in the twinkling of an eye we shall be changed so you are still evolving you are still what sir evolving mm. so if anybody te tells you that he knows you he's making a mistake he's a lie nobody knows you so not even you know knows yourself It is God that walketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. In prayer we submit and surrender our will for the will of God to take over and find expression in us. 
and through us. Please hear this. In prayer, we submit and surrender our will for the will of God to take over and find expression in us and through us. Matthew chapter 26, verse 39 and verse 42. Two verses. Matthew 26, verse 39 and verse 42. And Jesus went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Verse 42. Watch this, sir. He went again the second time and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if this cup may not pass away from me except I drink it, let thy will be done. <laughs> this scripture gives us the picture of the prayer of Jesus where he totally, absolutely and unreservedly submitted his will to the will of God. Jesus submitted his will to the will of God. So in prayer, we submit and surrender our will to God for the will of God to take over in order for the will of God to find expression in us and through us. Sir, the greatest gift that man can give God is the gift of total surrender to the will of God. The greatest gift that anyone can give God is the gift of total surrender to the will of God. If Jesus had not surrendered his will to the will of God, the salvation of humanity would have been a stake. The salvation of humanity would have been a stake, sir. The process would have to be started all over again. <laughs> and you can imagine how many people will, you know, go to hell if the process were to be started again. Is somebody here? What else? In prayer, we submit and surrender our will for the will of God to take over in order for God's will to find expression in us and through us. Therefore, sir, prayer is an altar of encounter with divinity. Prayer is an altar of encounter with divinity. It is in prayer that we encounter God. And who you encounter in prayer is more important than having your needs met in prayer. Who you meet in prayer is more important than having your needs met in prayer. Prayer is an altar of encounter with God. The altar of prayer is an altar of encounter with God. And no one encounters God without a transformation. His life. You cannot meet with God and remain the same. Therefore, no one encounters God without having a transformation in his life. Amen. Brethren, I want you to know that who we meet in prayer is more important than having our needs met in prayers. Who we meet in prayers. In prayer, we meet with God. So that after prayer, we look like God. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying, sir? So in prayer, we meet with God. So that after prayer, we look like God. In Psalm 17, verse 15. The word says, As for me, I will behold thy face. I will behold, behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied. When I awake with thy likeness. Amen. Watch this scripture, sir. He said, as for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied. When I awake with thy likeness. Sir, we become like whom we behold. We become 
like whom we behold. Who you look at constantly will determine who you look like eventually. Who you look at constantly will determine who you become like eventually. So in prayer we behold him so that after prayer we look like him. In prayer we look at him. After prayer we look like him. My father. Did you get that sir? In prayer we look at him. So that after prayer we look like him. Hmm. 2 Corinthians 3.18 We all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of God are changed into the same the same image from glory to glory even as by the spirit of God. Did you see that sir? In prayer we look at him so that after prayer we look like him because you become like whom you behold. Is somebody here? Who you look at constantly determines <laughs> who you look like eventually. Who you look at constantly determines who you look like eventually. Je Jesus came on the scene and said, I am my father, I want. He said to them, if you see me, you see my father. Why? Because who you look at constantly determines who you look like eventually. In prayer, we look at him so that after prayer, we look like him. Why? Because you become like whom you behold. You become like whom you behold. So who we meet in prayer is more important than having our prayers met. Because who we meet in prayer determines who we look like after prayer. Becoming like God is more important than having your needs met, sir. Is somebody getting that now? <laughs> Looking like God in every aspect of life is more important than having your needs met. That's why I say who we meet in prayer is more important than having our needs met. Who we meet in prayer. Who do we meet in prayer? The Almighty. Psalm 17 verse 15. As for me, I will behold his face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied. When I awake with his likeness, likeness. So you become like whom you behold in prayers. And looking like God is more important I'm having your, pray, your, your needs met in prayer. Looking like God as a result of prayer is more important than having your needs met in prayer. When you come out of prayer, where you behold God, you look like God. And that is more important than having your needs met in prayer. So when you look like God, and that is the ultimate plan and purpose of God. The reason for, cre for the creation of man. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. What that is simply means is that let's make man to look like us. And we lost it by sin. We regain it in prayer, sir. Are you hearing me, sir? That's the ultimate plan of God. To make man like him. To make a replica of him on earth. That's the ultimate plan of God. And that was what was lost to sin in the first Adam. But it is regainable. It is recoverable in prayers. That's why prayer is not a place you rush in and rush out. <laughs> prayer is not rushing in and rushing out. No. You spend time in prayer. You look at him until you look like him. You look at him until you look like him. Sir. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? <laughs> Why is the altar of prayer important to our Christian adventure? Why do we engage the altar of prayer? In our Christian adventure. The answer is simple sir. Our engagement with God on the altar of prayer. Is for the fulfillment. 
of his prophetic word in our lives. It is for the fulfillment of his prophetic words in our lives. Therefore, prayer is an avenue of securing prophecy fulfillment. Prayer is an avenue of securing prophecy fulfillment. Every prophecy requires a prayer response for the desired result to be obtained. Every prophecy requires a prayer response for the desired result to be obtained from the prophecy. Are you getting what I'm saying? In 1 Kings chapter 18, from verse 41 to verse 42, the word says, And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there's a sound of abundance of rain. Elijah gave Ahab a prophecy. Get thee up, eat and drink, for there's the sound of abundance of rain. So that was the prophecy, sir. He gave Ahab a prophecy of the sound of abundance of rain coming. In the realm of the spirit, Elijah the prophet caught the sound of the abundance of rain. That abundance of rain is coming. After the prophecy, see the response of Ahab. And the response of Elijah, the vessel through which the prophecy came. Two different responses to the same prophecy. See what Ahab did. Ahab went up to eat and to drink. Elijah went up to the, to the top of Mount Carmel and cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees, a prayer posture, to pray. Two different responses to the same prophecy. <laughs> so how you respond to prophecy, the time is what you receive from prophecies. <laughs> how you respond to prophecies, the time is what you receive. from. We do not all receive the same thing from the same prophecy, sir. We do not all receive the same thing from the same prophecy. Why? Because we do not all respond the same way to the same prophecy. How you respond to prophecy determines what you receive from prophecy. Ahab received the prophecy of abundance of rain coming. He went up to eat and drink. Elijah, the vessel through which the prophecy came, went up top of camel, cast himself to the ground and put his face between his knees. That's a prayer posture. So he went up to pray. One received the prophetic word of God and went up to eat and drink. The other received the prophetic word of God and went up to pray in response. Hmm. Paul was speaking to his son Timothy in 1 Timothy 1.18. Hear what Paul said to him. This prophecy this charge I give unto thee, son Timothy. This charge I give unto thee, son Timothy. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy. And the same charge is committed to every one of us even now. What's the charge, sir? According to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest what, sir? War, a good warfare. One received prophecy and went off and engaged in form fear. The other received prophecy and went off and engaged in warfare. Two different responses. Ahab received prophecy and went off and engaged in what, sir? Form fear. Elijah, the one through whom the prophecy came, received the prophecy and went off and engaged in warfare. Therefore, every prophecy requires a warfare response for the prophecy to be fulfilled. Every prophecy requires what, sir? A warfare response <laughs> for the fulfillment of the prophecy. Every prophecy requires a warfare response. That warfare response is what we call prayer. It is prayer response to prophecy that determines the result obtained from prophecies. It is prayer response to prophecy that determines the 
res, you know, result obtained from prophecies. Let me give you an example. In Jeremiah 29, from verse 10 to verse 13, Jeremiah 29, from verse 10 to verse 13, for thus saith the Lord, so it's a prophecy, thus saith the Lord, it's a prophecy applicable to every believer, sir, even in our dispensation. He said, after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good work towards you in causing you to return to this place. That was the prophecy, sir. After 70 years be accomplished in Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good work towards you in causing you to return to this place. Verse 11, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. But, so, the prophecy is because of my good thoughts towards you. Because I'm thinking of you. I've not forgotten you. But see what you need to do for the prophecy to be fulfilled. Verse 12. <laughs> then shall you call upon me. And you shall go and do what, sir? You shall go and pray, not go and play. You shall go and do what, sir? Pray, not go and play. Many receive prophecy and go and play. Very few receive prophecy and go and pray. Many receive prophecy and go and play with prophecy. They go to play. Very few receive prophecy and go to pray. Then shall you go and pray unto me. And I will hearken unto you. Verse 13. And you shall seek me and find me. When you shall search for me, how sir? With all your heart. Verse 14 says, And I will be found of you, said the Lord. And I will turn your captivity. I will be found of you, said the Lord, and I will turn away your captivity. And you know what the Bible said? When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the hidden, the Lord has done great things for them. The response in verse 3 was, the Lord has done great things for us. We are off. We are glad. Amen. <laughs> Sir, in Daniel chapter 9 verse 2, Daniel responded to the prophecy of Jeremiah. And see how Daniel responded to that prophecy. Daniel chapter 2. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books. Daniel was not there when Jer the prophecy came by the prophet Jeremiah, but it was recorded so he understood it by books. I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that, the, that he will accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. Verse 3, see how he responded when he got to understand the prophecy. And I set my face unto the Lord to do what, sir? To seek by prayer and supplication with fasting and with sackcloth and asses. Not a day was added to 70 years for the prophecy to be fulfilled. Not a day, sir. Because somebody responded to that prophecy with prayers. So the prophecy was fulfilled according to the timeline of 70 years. But you know the prophecy concerning the children of Israel in captivity in Babylon? It extended with 30 years because nobody responded with prayers. Until they began to pray, their captivity was not terminated. I will turn your captivity when you pray, sir. Somebody hear what I'm saying? The prophecy that God gave Abraham in Genesis chapter 15, verses 13 and 14. Genesis 15, 13 and 14, sir. Watch this. And God said unto Abraham, Know of a shorty that your seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and they shall serve them and afflict them. For how long, sir? 400 years. So the prophecy that came through Abraham was that the children of Israel will stay in captivity in Egypt for 400 years. The prophecy that came through Jeremiah was that the same children of Israel will stay in Babylon, in captivity in Babylon for 70 years. 
why was the prophecy of 70 years fulfilled at exactly 70 years and the one for 400 years was extended by 30 years prayer response The prophecy of 70 years was fulfilled at exactly 70 years because there was a prayer response. The prophecy of 400 years was extended with 30 years because there was no prayer response. Every prophecy requires a prayer response for prophecy fulfillment. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Every prophecy you don't receive prophecy and go to pray. You receive prophecy and go to pray. If you want to see the prophecy fulfilled, is somebody getting that now, sir? In Isaiah chapter 62, from verse 1 to verse 3, and from verse 6 to verse 7, we we'll read them after that order. 1 to 3, 6 to 7. For Zion's sake will I not hold my peace. And who is Zion? You and I. Because Zion is the prophetic name of the church. And we are the church. The church is not a four square building. Or a building with four corners. Or four walls. That's not the church. Sir. We are the church. So the church is not a physical building. The church is the garden of his people. The church is not a physical building. The church is the garden of the redeemed. Did you get that sir? So Zion is the prophetic name of the church and we are the church. And so God is speaking to you and I here. He said, for Zion's sake, for your sake, for my sake, God said, I will not hold my peace. For Jerusalem's sake, the garden of his people, I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness and the salvation thereof as a lamb that burned. That's, God said, I will not rest until you begin to shine. That's the meaning, sir. I will not rest until you shine. <laughs> I will not hold my peace until you make it in life. So God is committed to your success. My father, are you hearing me, sir? He said, I will not rest until you succeed. Verse 2. The Gentiles shall see your righteousness and all kings shall see your glory. <laughs> and thou shalt be called by a new name which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Verse 3. Thou shalt be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem. Sir, you have a royal destiny. But it's not showing. Why? Lack of prayer response to prophecy. So your royal destiny must show, sir. And if your royal destiny must show, see what you need to do in verse 6 and verse 7. Verse 6. I have set watchmen upon thy walls. What's the work of watchmen? Watch and pray. That's the work of watchmen, sir. So prayer is the work of watchmen. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem. We shall never hold their peace day nor night. You that make mention of the Lord, that's prayer. Making mention of the Lord connotes prayer. You that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. Verse 7 says, give him no rest until he establish you. And until he make Jerusalem a praise on the earth. Until your royal destiny is established. That's the requirement. So verses 1 to 3 tells you what God will do in your life. Verses 6 and 7 tells you what you need to do for God to do. What he has ordained to happen in your life. Did you get that? So if what God has said he will do in your life is not happening. It's because you have not done what you are supposed to do for God to do. What he has ordained to do. Somebody heard what I'm saying. I will stop here for today. We will continue on Monday. Stand on your feet with me. Whatever God has ordained for my life, whatever God has ordained of my life, two things, sir. Whatever God has ordained of my life, and whatever God has ordained for my life, Lord, let it begin to show now, not later. I don't have time to waste. Do you have time to waste? So listen to the prayer. Whatever God has ordained of my life, that's what he has destined you to be in life. And whatever God has ordained for my life, the things that God has ordained for your life, they must begin to happen now. There shall be no delay. I don't have time to waste. <laughs> if you are going to live for 100 years or 120 and you're already approaching 50 or, or 60, do you, that, that's half of your, your lifetime is already gone. 
That means you don't have time to waste her. That means whatever must happen, must happen now. So it is now or never. It is when, sir? Father, whatever you have ordained of my life and whatever you have ordained for my life, let all of them begin to happen now. Open your mouth and pray. Zaketo Soseki. Zakato Kete Keta Sakatai. Zila Ra, Zila Rale. Akapakato Soseke Beta Kata Sakatai. I will go in prayer. Rekeke Kakoto Susakataya. I came. I came by prayer. I'll stay, stay in, prayer. in prayer when I leave. When I leave this world, I will go in prayer. I came by prayer. I'll stay in prayer. Cause when I, when I leave this world. I will go in prayer. Soseke. Azusa. I came by prayer. Azusa. Azusa. Stay in prayer. Oh, when I leave this world, I will go in prayer. I will pray. Lord, whatever you have ordained of my life, and whatever you have ordained for me in life, Let them happen now. Cause Until them to happen speedily. Zikato, zeke kakata kata ya. Shai we pray. Zalaro shakaka to so. Until my healing comes, oh. Until I am transformed. Until my life comes. Whatever you have ordained of my life, I came by prayer. And whatever you have ordained for my life. Stay in prayer. Lord, let them happen in my life now. When I leave this world, let them happen in I my life go now. In prayer. I came by prayer. Whatever you have ordained for me, I now. stay in whatever prayer. Whatever you have ordained of my life shall not be delayed. When I leave whatever you have ordained of my world, life, and whatever you have ordained for my life pray. shall not suffer delay. Brakato Zezani. So I will pray. Zeke Balato, Zeke Kakoto Susai. The prophecy of my life shall not be extended. I will pray. The prophecy of my destiny shall not suffer delay. Akakoto Susaya. Jesus, I will pray. Thank you, Father. Zeke Kakoto Susaya. In Jesus' precious name. So listen to me. The prophecy of my glorious destiny shall not suffer delay. Agala abragagala to sosekete. Romans chapter 8, verses 29 and 30. This is your glorious destiny in, captured in scripture. This is your glorious destiny captured in scripture. The Bible said, For whom he did for no, he also did predestinate. So it's your destiny to be conformed to the image of his son. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, so it's not over. Moreover, sir, sir, it's not over. They say, Moreover, concerning your life and destiny. Galaro, <laughs> sir, did you hear that one before? It is not over. They say, Moreover, to your life and destiny. This one is a fresh one from heaven, sir. It just dropped now. <laughs> fresh from the oven of heaven. Fresh, it is not over. There's a moreover to your life and destiny. <laughs> Verse 30. Look at this. Sir. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. Father, the prophecy of my glorious destiny shall not suffer delay. Open your mouth and open fire. The prophecy of my glorious destiny shall not suffer delay. Bracato so sakataya. Azuze Kepala, Azagela Rosha Kekato Zuze. The prophecy of my glorious destiny shall not suffer delay. Braketo Zuze, Azekela, Akoto Sisekete, Sizala, Ropeke Pakapata Katasakataya, Zazayeke, Zazayeke Katosu, 
Ragagala, ragagala, ragagala. Por todos sus secretos. Así se la rale, así se la rale, así se la rale. My God, así se la, así se la, así se la. This is the place where I am transformed. Ragabala por todos sus Ragabata koto so sekeke te Saka koto The prophecy of my glorious destiny In the place of prayer This is the place Zaziza, Zaziza, Zaziza Do to me what you want Thank you Heavenly Father In Jesus precious name Stretch your hand towards the altar I stand today on this exalted altar by the unction that functions in this commission by the hand and help of God upon my life I decree and declare that the prophecy of your glorious destiny shall not suffer delay whatever God has ordained of your life and whatever God has ordained for your life I decree that they begin to happen in your life with the speed of heaven in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that your destiny of royalty will begin to find expression in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Every gang up from the pit of hell to stop you from going up and fulfilling your glorious destiny, I decree and declare that gang up be scattered by fire by thunder. In the name of Jesus, my father. Listen. The closer you are to the altar, the faster this prophecy will work in your life. Everybody at the back, come, come close. The, the, just stay on your seat. Just, just make sure there's no empty seat be in your front. Come close. I stand on this altar now. Esilaro shagagala e praketo agalaro shkalate ketezi asila asilare azazeye ketazusa apreketa gala prateke agaluro shagala radia ezizaza akababebe azusekeke kataye. It is not over. There's a moreover to your life and your destiny. I decree and I declare that the prophecy of your glorious destiny, the prophecy of your royal destiny. The prophecy of your enviable destiny, the prophecy of your prosperous destiny, begin to find expression with divine alacrity. In the name of Jesus, the forces of delay that want to delay the fulfillment of your glorious prophetic destiny, I command them to be destroyed by fire, by thunder. In the name of Jesus, God is committed to your making it. And I pray now you begin to make it in life. Begin to break forth on the left. Begin to break forth on the right. Begin to break forth on every side. In the name of Jesus. Whatever catches your life. Whatever inhibits your destiny. Whatever militates against your progress. I command them terminated right now. I release you to fulfill destiny. In grand style. I release, your, release you to fulfill your prosperous destiny. I release you to fulfill your glorious destiny. I say to you it is well with you. And so shall it be in Jesus' precious name. Celebrate Jesus with a big, big clap offering. Please be seated. Take your seat right there where you are. Does the seat that is empty right there where you are? Please be seated. Thank you for watching. For further inquiries, please call 0806 350 4122 or 0806 922 6967. You can join us live on Facebook at Kingdom Prevailers International Christian Center or our YouTube channel at Kingdom Prevailers International Christian Center. God bless you.